Well, I certainly would never shy away from adventure. Um, I think it all began from when I was a little kid. I, I was told, I don't remember this, that I was rocking in a rocking horse at the top of a flight of stairs and mom stepped away for just a moment and then she heard this big thump 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 and then when she came back frantic, I was at the bottom of the stairs rocking in the rocking horse just as happy as can be. Ever since then, I have enjoyed adventures, both looking forward to them and talking about them after the fact. And I raced mountain bikes and rode a bike across the country and uh, I guess I've had quite a few adventures in the past. And then you got married and, and had kids. And then I got married and had kids. <laughs> anyway, I, I rode a bike across the country. I was in and out of uh, Canada and I pulled a little one-wheeled trailer. I camped the majority of the nights. The distance I rode ranged anywhere from 50 to 150 miles in a single day. And the last two days of that ride, I started having double vision. And if this is 12 o'clock on a clock, I had double vision from about here over, from about 11 o'clock over. And it's since cleared up, but it was really odd. Finished up the bike ride, and I was just exhausted. Just figured it was because I just rode my bike 3,600 miles. But I ultimately ended up flying home and having a series of tests, just because neurological tests, MRIs, um, CAT scans. I even had a brain biopsy because I had no idea what I had. And ultimately, after the course of going through all these different tests, they determined that it was multiple sclerosis, which is an autoimmune disease and it's not contagious, so my wife's not going to get it or anybody else. And what it is, it, it attacks, my body attacks the nerves in my central nervous system, the insulation around it, in short. You have good days and bad days, I and do there have good are days, and bad are days, days. when yeah. you can do one particular task without any difficulty, and the next day yeah. it, it seems almost impossible. That's true, yeah. Matt's only been in the wheelchair for five and a half years. Yeah. And I think it's been a revolutionary experience in terms of understanding disability and handicap. And most disabled people spend so much energy just um, getting out of bed in the morning, getting dressed, um, getting into their car, um, that it's, it, that last little step of getting out to the car or getting out of the car and getting into your store or getting to your destination I mean that's that's just sort of a, a drop in the bucket in terms of the amount of energy that one expends compensating for um, how how one's body doesn't work and I think in terms of how it affects our family life how Matt is doing can change on the on the turn of a dime and it can seem like we're having a great day but he might get overheated and then it's really a struggle to get into the van so maybe we don't go to the park even though that's what we were planning on doing or we can't make it to church or it becomes very stressful if we are out and about somewhere um, and Matt becomes very fatigued and it's very stressful I'm wondering how, how are we gonna get him back in the van how are we gonna get home current van's really not working for us right now. I need assistance to get into the van, and on a somewhat regular basis, I need it to get out of the van. And I just have to have somebody either with me or at the location where I'm headed to be able to go anywhere. And even if I have somebody else, it's a challenge. And as she said, the heat really affects me a lot. And if I'm hot, I tend to be a, like a wet noodle is the best way to describe it. And at that point, I can barely help her to help me to get into the van. And I'm concerned that she's going to get hurt. Or if anybody else besides her helps me, I'm afraid that it's going to hurt them in their effort to help me. The new van has a ramp. And I have the ability to just ride right in with my wheelchair and drive, staying seated in the wheelchair, just clips right in and away I go. I wouldn't need the assistance of somebody helping me get into the van, out of the van, 
In a sense, right now it's hard to dream. And as parents, you know, there are all these things that we we thought we'd do with our kids, going on family vacations, taking our kids to college, uh, things like that, that um, right now we can't do. Um, Even going to sporting events at this point. Yeah, going to our to, kids' yeah. football games yeah. or um, other events. It's a challenge to do those things. And that's, that's to say the least. That's to say the least. Having the ability to go where I need to will help everyone in the family. I mean, certainly Sarah and me, but also the boys, because then the boys and I can have adventures on our own. I can't go anywhere with just one of the boys or just the two boys unless, again, we have somebody there to help us or we don't get out of the van. You know, we've explored various avenues for funding and there's very little funding out there. And there have been so many people that we've met over the years who have said, you know, we'd love to help, just let us know how. And so I think for us, that's, this is what we're doing. <laughs> this, is, this is how we could use help. Certainly we recognize that we are not the only ones who have needs and burdens. And so if this is a way that you would feel led to help our family, we're extremely grateful. And if this is not how you feel you can help us, or if there are other things that are pressing on you, then certainly we respect and understand that too. We're just thankful for the encouragement and the friendship that we've received from so many people over and the, the prayer, years. And, the and, and your prayer, most of all. <laughs>